Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you for uh, joining in this, uh, for participating in this webinar that we prepared uh, to uh, start uh, um, preparing ourselves for LACNIC uh, 37. We have a new public policy forum. I don't know whether you can see uh, my screen, but well, I'm Mariela Rocha. I'm the coordinator of uh, co uh, uh, training um, in at LACNIC and uh, with me today, I have Franco Cabrera, who's my colleague in the policy area. We work together and we also work with many people in the community, including many of the authors of the policies, the authors uh, that uh, drafted uh, the policies we are going to mention. And very soon, we also invited Ariel Wecher and Thomas Lynch to participate. We will, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So welcome. What you're going to hear today in today's webinar is the proposals that are going to be presented in the next forum, but especially you have the opportunity comentarios o lo que crean necesario a los autores no están todos porque bueno Hernán Moglet well there are some of the others who are not here el resto de los autores sí está está Fernando Fedjani con nosotros Fernando si puedes saludar the genial. rest of the authors are here lo tenemos a Jordi Palet con nosotros Jordi no está con la cámara prendida ahora pero después la va a encender eh, ahí está saludando Jordi gracias Eh, así que, que bueno, es una muy buena oportunidad. He's right there. Hello, Jordi. It is a great opportunity to learn about the proposals, to start a discussion, and to learn more. So without further ado, no, well, before, let me go over what you saw before joining the webinar. We do have simultaneous interpretation available, so you can select the channel, you can select the language that you want to listen to. If you click at the globe icon that you will find at the bottom of your screen. So without further ado, let's begin with the formal part of our presentation. Let me share my screen. So let me share the screen. There you see my screen. Can you please check? Yes, we, see, we can see it well. Mariela. Well, thank you. So let's get started. As I said, we're going to see a summary of uh, the proposals that are going to be submitted to the next forum. What is this webinar about? So, as I said, we'll uh, become familiar with the proposals that will be debated in the next forum. We can uh, ask questions of the authors in, uh, about some of them, and this will help us be better prepared for the discussion. We need the community to get engaged because the administration of the resources by LACNIC uh, is done on the basis of what the community tells us to do. If the community is not uh, telling us, we don't know what to do. It's the only way that is established for the uh, uh, administration of the resources. It's a bottom-up uh, process. It's the community that uh, needs to get involved. So we listen to all of you. Something that I wanted to highlight is that this webinar and whatever is said here does not uh, imply that there's consensus that is what we need uh, for a proposal to move forward because uh, for those of you who know the process for the development of consensus, we, you can only measure it in the debate that is developed uh, in the uh, discussion list. And there you have in brackets what the list is. If you haven't registered, it's politicas at lacnic.net. Please register. And now, for those of you uh, who haven't done it, you can do that. And the other possibility to participate is in the Public Policy Forum. It's uh, what is going to take place uh, next Wednesday in LACNIC 37 in Cali, Colombia. But as it is in Cali, well, that doesn't mean that you can't participate, even if you can't go, because you can 
uh, have a remote participation, just the same and uh, with the same uh, possibilities for uh, speaking uh, as if you were in uh, the room. So this webinar can is a very good opportunity to become familiar with the proposal so that you can uh, debate them or make comments uh, or whatever you want to say the day of the forum. We have a very healthy forum. We have only four proposals. And I say very healthy because the fact that we have a lot of proposals that uh, uh, well, it, it's a good thing to have enough time in the forum uh, so that we can understand things and so we don't have to rush. Sometimes when there are too many proposals, we need to run. But today, this year, we have only four. The four proposals propose, and uh, well, I'm going to be redundant uh, throughout uh, the presentation with proposal and uh, proposals. So these four proposals propose uh, amendments to the policy manual, but not uh, in the uh, development process, uh, but only in the manual. There you, you see them in uh, the screen. And the authors are Hernano Mogulevsky, who's not here today, Jordi Palet, he's the author and co-author with uh, Fernando Frediani of the rest of the proposals. So. We are going to let me tell you one by one what each, what each proposal proposes. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to propose you to, to invite you to interact with the authors. We'd like the authors to tell us what they consider timely so that uh, we can either we can promote uh, your engagement or the community's engagement in this uh, public policy proposal. The first one. Is uh, the one submitted by Hernan Mogileski? He uh, proposed it in uh, 2020. That is why the the um, ID is Black 2020-10. It was the tenth proposal that year, and this is the second version because he had already presented one version last year. It didn't reach consensus, and now he's uh, presenting the second. And it's called empowering the uh, delegated block receptors for uh, receivers for to sign or an ROA. So the idea is to add in the policy manual that it is allowed for those who receive sub assignments in the blocks uh, created by LACNIC to create their own uh, ROAs. And why? It's because today with uh, the uh, uh, current uh, policies, only the organization that receives the blocks directly from LACNIC they are the, one, the only ones that can create the ROAs. And if that organization uh, sub-assigns the blocks, those that receive them depend on uh, the creation of ROAs of uh, the organization. So, what the proposal says that those who is who receives this new designation can create their own. ROAs. It's quite a simple proposal, easy to understand, but there are two versions of it. The first one had not reached consensus, so we hope to hear your opinions about it, to be able to define the proposal one way or another. I think it is very interesting for organizations on the receiving end, because those organizations are not able yet to create their own ROAs and they are dependent on the parent organization, really. This is Jordi's proposal, so they might, he might be able to elaborate further and provide further details, but it is called transmission permission without send back for resources. And this will sustain or make the current practices more explicit, so to speak. So if there is an attempt to transfer address blocks and that trans 
difference for whatever reason does not go through for administrative purposes or the receiving organization then changed their mind for whatever reason that that is that it doesn't go through the offering organization is not under the obligation to send back those resources to LACNIC, but rather they might transfer them back in other situations. So they would be, they would still have them under custody. So what the author proposes is that this is made explicit under the manual. I think this is also very important for those organizations that do have the possibility to transfer to those who need who need it. The fact that you are embarking in a process of this nature, it will not mean that you are going to lose those resources if that transference is lost or fails, you can still do it further on or later on when needed. This is a very simple proposal. Sometimes we need to, for example, we have a manual that's taken years and years to develop the community changes and technology has changed substantially in the past 20 years especially when we think of IPv4 and IPv6. So the this proposal suggests we combine sections as sometimes it's redundant to speak about the same thing for IPv4 or IPv6, and rather we could have a single version that is made more clear, it's consistent, it's brief, and the proposal suggests we change the definition section and which change the title to definitions and general mandates. That would be one of the suggestions in how we draft the, the manual, for the public, the, the policy manual. I mean, we need to update it and we'll, we still have to discuss what those changes are going to be we should avoid any gaps. So it is a very timely moment to discuss these changes. Finally, LAC 2022-2, so the second one for the year, version one, it says renting resources is not accepted in current policy. So what they suggest is to make explicit or to clarify whether it is acceptable well, well, for renting IPv4 addresses in IPv6 should not be acceptable if these resources are not part of the set of services that are based on direct connectivity. The author suggests making explicit and very clear under the manual the leasing prohibition of those resources for those who have LACNIC allocations. So it, it is important that they are involved because those who are more significantly affected are carriers or the operators or the community at large. So it is good for you to provide your opinion. We want to hear from you as you are going to be directly affected by these changes as guardians of the resources. So it is very important that you do participate and that you do provide and that you do give us your opinion. So what do you think? Are the proposals clear? Did I make myself clear? Do you think that they are interesting? So what would you like the authors to explain? They are here with us. The moderators are here as well. So you can you can ask anything about the policy development process. We have a, a Q and A section at the bottom of your of your screen. So when I was 
describing the policies or try to provide a, a, a quick summary of them, but you can read the full proposal with the author's definition and impact assessments. I'm not sure if Franco already posted the, the links in the, in the chat feature. If he hasn't, let's do it now so you can access the entire proposal. And that would be all on my end for now. I will open up now the floor to hear your opinions and to what, what would you like to hear from the authors? Why do you think this is an interesting proposal to be discussed? So that, that is all on my end for now. So I really want everyone, I want to encourage everyone to take part in this discussion. Thank you. I will no longer share my screen. So I'd like to encourage everyone to participate. Are there any questions? No questions so far. Maybe the authors would like to elaborate on what I said. Please do, do not write any questions in the chat but rather in the Q&A the Q&A section. We do have one question. So let's first go with the, with the attendees. Luis Morales says, I would like to discuss the fact that there should be no restrictions in using IPs in, in any region we shouldn't just be able to use them in the LACNIC region, but one IP should be used in the USA, for example, which is an Aryan region. I, I think this is a proposal, Luis. And, and, and I will give the floor to the authors or the moderators, but this is a, a good point actually to to build a proposal around it. Mariela, if I could add something to this proposal, this should be a global proposal, really, because it affects the other RIRs, not just in our region. If if we are proposing that LACNIC addresses could be used in other regions, I mean, that is possible in a 49.99% because we have, I think a few years ago, we changed, I mean, the text was was quite ambiguous and it said that resources were mostly used in LACNIC. So what does mostly mean really? So we changed that word to 50%. So I'm not sure whether Luis was referring to both aspects or maybe one, but I think you're right, this could be a new proposal, but I think this should be a global proposal. I can assure you that I think there, there might be one or two regions that will never accept that. I, I can think of two regions that would never approve that. We don't want to disencourage him. No, no, I'm just letting him, letting him now. When we have a global proposal, I mean, one that affects other RIRs, although it will go through the policy development process, but for it to be approved, it has to be approved by all RIRs. That's how global policies are approved. You're, you're right. And, and someone, and, and I made a mistake. I don't know if this would be a, a global proposal because it is affecting the operations of the IRS, but for that proposal to have some weight really, and not to have disparity between the different RIRs that would have to be submitted before the five RIRs, even if it is not a global proposal, as a global proposal would be when an action has an impact on IANA. So that would be a proposal to be approved by the five RIRs. 
that would be great. And actually, Luis, we would have another possibility and you could submit this in the discussion list. We would like to hear what the community thinks about a proposal of this nature or, or what format it should follow. I think it could be interesting to use the discussion list to submit this. This is something that we, well, that it draws a lot of attention. Some people also ask me, have asked me what Luis asked, and I don't think that there is a need for a global proposal. I think this is a proposal that could be discussed in each RIR as we would need to use each RIR's resources. There are some RIRs that have, that do not have that kind of restriction in place. We do, and this is not, by chance that they exist. Resources are there to be used in the development of internet in our region in Latin America. I mean, there is no problem that these resources are being used in other region. However, to a lesser extent, to make sure that our, our region is thoroughly covered. If there's someone who needs to use these resources consistently in other regions, they might need to, to ask for these resources to another RIR, or they could be transmitted, whether permanently or not, but the resources should be devoted to developing the use of the internet in that given region. Otherwise, companies, especially when there is a shortage, they would come before those RIRs that have an excess of addresses and they would apply, for example, to Europe or using the resources in Europe where they were not actually meant to be used. So I think that this should be an individual proposal on the different RIRs might be more or less flexible about it. Luis also said that, well, thank you to your answers. I do think that this should be a global proposal. <laughs> Many do it already. However, it is not regulated. But Mariela, I will contact you all directly. Yes, of course, or in the policy list. Yes, it could be discussed in the policy list. Pedro asks, what part of the policy manual discusses the IPv4 and IPv6 equivalent texts. The problem is that right now, there is some disparity on some of the issues discussed under IPv4, but not IPv6. For example, for IPv4, we request a set of information, which I mean, it is, it makes sense that we ask when someone needs IPv6 resources. However, this is not stated under IPv6. Or another example, geolocalization is mentioned under IPv4, but not IPv6. Security, confidentiality, and LACNIC practices, or the equality in processing requests, and non-guaranteed routing, all of these topics, for example, are considered under the IPv4 section, but not IPv6, but however, they apply for both. So that's the point of this proposal, that, for example, the routing text, which I think overlap or are doubled, or instead of having a given issue only under IPv4 or only IPv6, I think that we should combine these uh, these sections and do an impact assessment. Because if not, we would have a new to have a new session and to redraft the entire manual. So here we have issues that are shared by all that are common and by changing the, sec the sessions then there might be things in that session that would apply to the three resources but anyway Jordi, i think that the question was had to do with unifying the text of the latest proposal that you presented that i just read that has to do with um, 
Yes, with those uh, three, Routab you mentioned routability. Yes, yes, precisely, precisely. Yes, we, I think uh, that it's LAC 2022 slash one. Yes, exactly. Unification of text uh, IPv4, IPv6. Yes, yes, you're right, you're right. Pedro has just said it. Good. So, very good. I don't know whether Pedro wants to confirm whether it's clear now or whether he has any further doubts. Well, while Pedro answers, let me tell you that RP uh, says, one of the participants saying that uh, that only applies if this is IANA action toward the RIRs. I think that it's a good uh, point to respond uh, in uh, the list. Uh, so uh, it, it's very timely indeed. We also have a comment. Well, Pedro answered saying, yes, so perfect, Jordi. He feels that you answered his doubt. Yes, so now let's go on. We have Jimmy Charlie Wanako Gutierrez, who says, the proposals are very interesting. It's necessary to discuss uh, both IPv4 and IPv6 at the same level, both technically and administratively. That's a comment. And uh, further on, he says, I'd like to say the following. For quite a while, I tried to obtain IPv4, more IPv4 blocks by transfer, but I couldn't, uh, I didn't succeed. I received only one proposal, but uh, with a huge amount. Uh, not even LACNIC has those costs for large ISPs. I consider that uh, the uh, LACNIC members that no longer uh, use IPv4 can uh, return them to LACNIC and LACNIC could manage them and assign them these IPv4 blocks. Well, that would be the honest thing to do. That is why transfers were created, because nobody is obliged to return what they are not using. So it's uh, some people thought that it was better not to have any transfers. Well, that is the reason why this won't happen. And precisely that is why Jimmy wrote this, the huge amount that he was asked because that has a market value. And as there already a transfer policy, it is possible to uh, transfer it if you agree with some other organization uh, and uh, there is a, a, a disbursement of, and uh, you can get it if you can justify that you need it. Now, today at LACNIC, it's, if unless you are a new organization, you have to be in the waiting list. And the only solution is to have a transfer. And if there's a cost, unfortunately, you have to pay that cost. That is one of the problems of the scarcity of IPv4. And my piece of advice is that if you were asked a lot of money, well, pay for it, because very soon you'll have to pay two astronomic amounts because the uh, values of IPv4 uh, um, can uh, increase more. But there's a much better solution. What is it? Jordi, what is it? If you already have addresses that I assume that Jimmy must have some addresses, I assume, because if he doesn't have it, well, get into the wa like Nick's waiting list. But if you he has addresses, deploy. Um, uh, roll out IPv6 uh, uh, and uh, do use IPv6 uh, uh, only, and uh, he will uh, save a lot of money with IPv4, and he will be updated with the rest of the internet. Maybe Jimmy can say so whether he has already started uh, deploying uh, IPv6. How can we help him? This is not a policy problem, but um, maybe we can help. Jimmy, Jimmy is paying close attention. He says, Sure, sure. I have IPv4 and IPv6. I already d deploy dual stack and I want to avoid implementing CG. Now, Jordi, I have to read this. Not only you have to read it. Yes, Jimmy says, sure, I have IPv4, IPv6. I've already deployed dual stack. I want uh, to avoid having to implement carry gray NAT. Yes, so Jordi, yes. Yes, and he adds, as an ISP, it uh, 
uh, all IPv6 is very complicated for the final client. Well, it's not all IPv6. It's a combination of two things. IPv6 only, that I understand what he says by all IPv6, with IPv4 as a service. What's the result of that? In the networks of the clients, he'll continue to have dual stack, but with just a few addresses, with a slash 22, he can perfectly well give a service to hundreds of thousands of clients. And he continued to have dual stack, but his network is only going to have IPv6, except in some parts of the core where there are key, BGP, etc. Good. So now let's continue with the policy issue. Yes, yes, because uh, so let's let's go back to our topics. Yes, we we have uh, to bring uh, Jordi back to the topic. Um, anyway, Jimmy, uh, thank you. Oh, he says thank you, Jordi. I look for you at the event. Good, Jordi. Will you be at the event? Well, Mariela, I wanted to make a brief comment about. Uh, Another thing that uh, Jimmy said, that is uh, that it is necessary to, uh, um, that is uh, the use of IPv4, IPv6 uh, and uh, its consistency with the manual. That That is, most things will be dual for IPv4, IPv6 and uh, ASNs uh, with regard to uh, the uh, number uh, resources, but there are some things that don't apply to IPv4 and IPv6 the same, such as transfers, because transfers don't work the same way for IPv4 and IPv6. So sometimes in the policy manual, we need to differentiate between them. Well, but that is not being unified in the proposal. In my proposal, we didn't speak of unifying that. I understand what you say, but just in case, I don't want to confuse anybody. No, 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 I was not speaking of your proposal. Right, right. Yes, and I think that what you say, Fernando, is very timely because it's a time that we can tell the audience that in many cases you see that this happens and in others not. So you have to discriminate to tell them apart in which cases you can and in which case you can't. So we have to organize our manual well so that it will be uh, clear to all. Excellent. So we have uh, the, uh, the chairs, the moderators that can uh, take the floor. Hello, Tomas. Hello, Ariel. How are you? Do you want to say anything about these four proposals, uh, about this public, uh, this uh, policy development process? I didn't study. I didn't study. Well, no. Actually, these are very, very interesting proposals. They uh, they reveal some of the discussions that we have when we uh, discuss uh, the policies and in these uh, virtual talks, for instance, renting IPs. This is something that at other RIRs is quite fashionable. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, I won't uh, give my opinion about that. But we always see very interesting proposals and the unification uh, and unifying uh, IPv4 and IPv6, the manual was created a long time ago. So not everybody was thinking of IPv6. And there are patches of uh, IPv4 and IPv6 assignments, and uh, uh, we have to listen to the community to see how we can uh, unify them, but that's uh, the way it grew gradually. All the proposals always uh, help us grow both the policy manual. Let me clarify that one thing is the policy manual, how assignments were um, uh, managed. I'm going to give IPv4, IPv6, an autonomous system. And the other important document is the PDP. That is, how do we, how can we make proposals reach the policy manual? How the forum works. So there's a range of proposals, right? And uh, there are other proposals that we could continue to work with. There's a working group with jo Jordi and Fernando are part of that working group, but we haven't 
been able to present it uh, to this forum yet, but it's quite uh, a nice experience and quite a novel for all of us. Thank you, Tomas. It's true. Yes, uh, just a brief comment of what uh, Tomas uh, is saying is this working group that we are working in, for, for those of you who don't know it, in the PDP, you can create working groups to debate more specific topics, more complex topics that not necessarily need to be debated in the list. So the idea is to be able to better organize the proposal. And now we have a bottom-up group created by the moderators, and it's been very positive, very interesting, and we got a very good outcome. I loved to participate there. And having more people participate with us in the Public Policy Forum, we might have more working groups to discuss more refined text of proposals than the uh, uh, than we can see in the discussion. I think it's very positive, and I, I think it's something that I'd like to highlight about uh, what Thomas said. Yes, yes, it's what is happening with the working group is very enriching. It's a big opportunity to take that tool that the PDP gives us and use it. This that had been generated with the two proposals that were very similar. I think that we have an excellent work and we'll uh, present it to the community once it's completed. Ariel, would you like to say anything? Hello, good afternoon. No, I'll be very brief. This is something that we always try to, uh, we repeat with Tomas. Each of us participates, and as a matter of fact, uh, you'll see the, per the presentation that we'll give next to Wednesday. You e each of us participates from our own backgrounds and with our knowledge. When you get involved here, you don't need to get involved with all the proposals. We always participate on a personal basis. Sorry, my phone rang. And uh, we, we always participate as a person. We are not representing any companies, any organizations. So each of us participates in a proposal that uh, we are interested in. And uh, if you, you see a need, propose something. There is no need for you to be an internet genius or a, an, an excellent uh, lawyer, uh, renowned, globally renowned to participate here. It's just based on what you know and with other people to join us because that's what we need. But you don't have to be an expert, I repeat. You just need to be able to read the mail and you have a bit of common sense so that you can give your view. Just that. Yes, and even let me say, Ariel, that we always have comments in uh, forums like this. Here, we won't uh, say whether uh, a proposal has consensus or not, but there are always very good uh, uh, comments. And then I don't know why the people in the Public Policy Forum, they remain silent. Yes, at the webinars, we say a lot, but then afterwards, when uh, they are in the formal stages in the Public Policy Forum, the people are sort of shy. Yes, but I think that people are embarrassed I mean, in the past, I, I would understand having stage fright when you had to be somewhere in person, but right now we're going to use a Q&A section or a chat feature. So if you are taking part remotely and you don't want to, or maybe you could even be at the same venue and if you don't want to stand up in front of an audience, you can log in into Zoom. As Jimmy said, these are great ideas but let's see how they are reflected in the forum. I don't know if you use the same expression, the cat got your tongue, when someone really is embarrassed about saying something, but really that's how it is. It is, I mean, you might use the chat feature, even though if you are physically at the venue, you could, you could use it as well. Yes, and you could choose your profile name. You can make it to be Ricardo Arjona. 
Tomás or Ariel. You could even choose any name you want to name your to rename your profile. I know there are no questions. That's why I'm taking the floor. You spoke about the leasing issue at the beginning, and you said that you did not want to give your own opinion. Why not? This is not the forum. Well, I don't want to give an opinion about the proposal. No, right. I want to hear your opinion on the topic, not the proposal. Oh, you're, you're pushing me. You're pushing me. Now, Thomas, Wednesday at seven o'clock, I will, I will tell you, right. Well, if no one ratifies, well, yeah, either way. Jordi, don't push it. It's just a joke. Okay. Guys, this, it's true what you said whenever we host events like this, we see that people really want to participate and they might not be able to do so for whatever reason. But I think all four proposals have great potential in the sense that these are issues that are very close to operators. So speaking about leasing or no leasing, it's not trivial. It's not a trivial issue whether I receive a sub distribution or allocation and I can be the owner of my own ROAs, it's not a minor issue either. And the same with the other two proposals. They might not be as critical when we speak about editing the text or redrafting that text. But when it comes to discussing the return or not of resources, I mean, in practice, that's being done already. There is no return of resources whenever there's a failed transference right now. But it would be good to have it in, in, in writing. Why not? I mean, this is a timely, this, this is the moment to do it. So let me once again share my screen with you. Let me know if you can if you can see it. Mariela, since you are speaking about returning or not returning resources, I think that there is no doubt in the policy manual, where they stand for or against a particular issue, but the fact that we accept that resources should not be returned if the transference doesn't go through, it is not enough knowing it because it could be open to anyone's interpretation. I think that the documents itself should lay them out very clearly so people don't have any doubt. The staff criteria could even change. And if that changes, I mean, if there is new staff, for example, they might not agree with the old staff and they have another interpretation of the policy manual. I think that these issues in the policy manual or in any regulatory document should be made very clear and very explicit. That's great because that's what drove you to make this proposal. That's why you made that proposal. And that's what we are trying to achieve with these activities. We want to know why people have felt moved to make these proposals. Sometimes these proposals, I mean, I don't make them up myself, but when dealing with clients, I see that their manual might not be very clear and many doubts arise. So the same could happen to other clients in the region or LACNIC members who are reading the policy manual and they cannot necessarily interpret any given situation. So this is why, and not just in LACNIC, but in the other regions as well. I mean, I'm not looking to change necessarily things, but to make them more clear. 
Thank you, Jordi. It is good that we know what drives everyone to really submit these proposals and what, what it is that we look for in this process. So this is the agenda, public policy forum. Right here, if you look at my cursor, we have the three time slots for Wednesday, fours, Cali time. It starts at 9.30 in the morning. Remember, this is Cali time. You should look at your own time zone. So you can participate. You could send your suggestions, comments, observations. There are different ways of participating. You could be physically in the venue. You could use the Q&A as you have just done it. You could request the floor. There will be an open mic even for online attendees. So we really are trying to cover all of the potential options in these high rate events due to current circumstances. Well, thank God we do have some people attending in person, but well, I have nothing further to, to add. Thank you, Franco, who has helped me organize all of this. Thank you for the, uh, thank you to the authors because they were so willing to participate at once when we said that we were hosting this webinar. Thank you guys for that. I want to also thank the moderators. This is just the very last minute before traveling. We need to finish up our presentations and this and that, and, and you took the time to be here today. Thank you to the entire staff of LACNIC for all of your support, and I'll see you at the Public Policy Forum. Let me just make a very quick comment about the Public Policy Forum. For those people who are just now becoming familiar with the forum, many times we do have colleagues who have been distributed or allocated resources and there are some practices that might be forbidden under the policy manual there is no or there might not be an explicit prohibition in the manual many of them do it even though they are prohibited and so we need to have a proposal for that some say so i say that if something is prohibited you cannot do it unless there is a policy or unless there is consensus and then the board ratifies it. All LACNIC members signed an agreement saying that they agree with the policies in place. So the right thing to do is to present a proposal to discuss it, to reach consensus and then have the board ratify it. We cannot just do something because everyone else is doing it or many are doing it. So we might, have different ideas or we might not all agree with the policy manual so if that is the case you should take these steps it's not just about many people are doing it and that means that we have reached consensus even those who are doing it they might be wrong and they could be subject to penalties and they are even running the risk of getting their resources taken or losing their resources. And, and, and finally, let me just say that all RIRs, all five, I mean, I think there are two entities that are very important. One is the board and the other one is the PDP. Those are the two most important sectors of the RIRs. The board is governed by the members and the PDP is open to the entire community. I mean, there are no restrictions. Thank you for clarifying that. There are no restrictions to taking part in the public policy forum. I was thinking about it earlier, but the only restriction to really present a proposal would be to have an email address right who doesn't have one so really there are no restrictions to take part in the public policy forum 
or to submit your opinion. We are all together. We are, we are all part of a community. So for attendees, and, and we are getting ready to wrap up, for all attendees who will be in Cali and who are not very familiar about the policy development process, I encourage you to take part in the tutorial to take place on Monday. And in this tutorial, I mean, it is in an in-person session, and we will explain how the public policy forum works, and we will practice how to develop proposals based on some concern or some sort of question. We, we will go over it. We will see how to do it. Okay, well, once again, thank you all. Thank you. I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I'll, I'll see you all in Cali. Thank you. Thank you, Mariela. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Mariela, ¿sigue, ¿sigues por ahí? Se fue.